What is happening? Aaron Sill here with Sill Photography, not still photography. Sill Photography, like a window. Thanks, Peter. Today's video is gonna be a, a, a pretty basic one, but it's important with automotive photography. 100%, very important. Today, we are talking about tripods and why I think they are pretty crucial for any automotive photographer and any up and coming automotive photographer. I just finished cleaning my truck. That's all I got to shoot today. I'm gonna go to a common location that I like to shoot at because it's fall, it's cooling off, it's starting to get really nice out and I just wanna see how it's starting to look, see if anything is changing in that location. Oh my gosh, the sun. I just wanna see if that location is looking really good yet. I mean, around here, a lot of stuff's green, but there are actually trees already starting to change. I mean, it's not full-blown fall yet, but we're getting there. It's getting close, so tripod focus for today. I'm gonna give three solid reasons why I think any up-and-coming automotive photographer need a decent tripod, not just a cheap tripod like off Amazon, something decent. I would say you have to be in the range of like 80 to $100 minimum. At that point, you can get a pretty good tripod, and something like this, which actually has arms that extend all the way around, ideal, and I'll explain why. Let's head to the location. One of the most obvious reasons to have a tripod is to mount your camera, obviously. But once I got it, I realized when I started shooting like events and stuff, if there's like a car show and tons of cars are coming in, having a good tripod that you can like literally mount this up, it comes with this little hook on the bottom and you can, if you have sandbags, you can put sandbags on it. You can actually hook your bag to it and your bag could be the weight for it. But having that, put the camera on the tripod and get a shot of every single car coming into the car show. That's what I've, that's what I've used it for multiple times in the past. Just set it up, even have the camera on a remote and I can just, as soon as the car comes, click. As soon as the car comes, click. Just keep doing that. Also something I'm super excited about. <laughs> I got this on a gimbal, so uh, no more shaky footage. Yeah, walking, walking. Tell me how smooth this is. Look pretty good. Back to what I was saying about tripods. Now, you might run into situations where a tripod is actually almost 100% necessary, and you could call anything a tripod. You could call truck bed tailgate tripod, you could call your vehicle a tripod, you could call a bench your tripod. But an actual tripod that has mounts and you can mount, you can have the base plate on your camera and then mount that onto the tripod, in certain situations is almost you have to have it. Why? For example, let's say I wanted to go down that road down there and shoot anything. I've been down this at this park multiple times. That road, especially right now, I, I think it's about, time is it? Uh, yeah, we're in golden hour right now. So like I know at this time that road is dark because it is just covered in trees Especially now because they're filled with leaves so that adds to the shade So there's even more shade tripod would come in handy because you got to have a super slow shutter speed If you want to maximize the potential of whatever lens you have like say you're shooting with a 50 millimeter f1.8 lens You want to maximize that and use it at f1.8 But that might not be enough light instead of bumping up your ISO just use a tripod and slow down the shutter Make sure it's completely sturdy and like on a flat surface where it is not gonna move. Like I said, get a good tripod. That way you know it's sturdy and in place. That way once you're shooting that, you're guaranteeing yourself a sharp photo. That's what I love about automotive photography. You can shoot a car anywhere, almost any time with about any kind of light. I've literally used my phone flashlight and exposed it for a long time, like took like a probably like a three minute exposure and just walked around the entire vehicle and lit the entire thing up with just that. It all depends on how you do it. And a tripod, absolutely necessary for dark situations to where you gotta, you don't wanna make the image quality worse by bumping up the ISO. You wanna keep it as clean as possible. On that note, light's kinda bad. Maybe it'll be better if I stand over. You know what? I don't like this light. We're switching it up again. So whatever. On that note, night photography. Like I said, this is a video for up and coming photographers. So if you're an up and coming automotive photographer and you've never tried long exposure, you kinda have to have a tripod to do long exposure to make it easier to do long exposure. Hold on. You don't have you don't have to do long exposures in the in the way that if you don't know what long exposure is, it is when you're taking a photo, basically your shutter speed, that number that says one over whatever. Normally you're probably at one over 200 or higher. Most people are during the day if you're shooting whatever. It's that number. If you go all the way down to the very bottom, you'll start going into second and it's like one second. At that point, you're basically taking long exposures and that's opening the shutter for a period of time and letting in light. And at night, it's almost necessary to do that unless you have something like lighting up your subject. Doing long exposures with automotive photography like and having like light trails go across the frame, it's a blast. 
I highly recommend it if you've never tried it. You've gotta go for it, it's so much fun. <laughs> One thing I do with my tripod and long exposures at night is I actually have a, I have a hair, hair tie on this. You might be asking, why do you have a hair tie on your tripod leg? Well, I use a remote control, trigger the camera, and I just leave the camera on bulb mode, B-U-L-B, bulb mode. When you put it, your camera in bulb mode, you can click the shutter and it will expose until you take your finger off the shutter. But doing that, you're actually shaking the camera and that can cause motion blur and then that will ruin your shot basically and you don't wanna do that. So I use a remote and a hair tie, put the remote in there, wrap it around the tripod, have it plug into the camera, and then I can make sure this tripod's nice and sturdy and click the shutter and take my photo. That way I know every single shot is gonna be sharp as long as I have the, the vehicle in focus, which from time to time is not. <laughs> Fall and spring. I love how they look, I hate how they feel. Obviously, great way to mount the camera. Works if you need a lower shutter speed and you have to, uh, you're in a more difficult, darker situation. And then night photography and long exposure, perfect. Ideal, ideal to have a good tripod. And you can find these kind of tripods all over the place. I mean, like I said, you need one that extend out like this. Because think about, if you spread them out like this and then set it down, stretch them a little bit more once you're on the ground, press it down a few times, that is solid. Camera's not gonna be shaky, it's not gonna shake at all. You're gonna be golden and they fold up real nice and easy. Having this angle, most uh, camera bags, if you, if you have a camera backpack, they usually have side loops and this just fits right into it. And it's not super heavy, it's aluminum, so it is a metal one and they sell carbon fiber ones, but carbon fiber comes at a cost. If you're on a budget, these aluminum ones work great. And later on down the line, highly suggest getting a better ball head. I still have the, this is the one that came with the tripod. I still use it because it's fine, but I, at times I'm like, I kind of wish I had one with the handle, like the fluid heads with the handle that pan real nice and steady. At times I wish I had that, but this still gets the job done. I mean, if I tighten it just right and loosen this just right, it's actually a pretty smooth, you can feel some resistance, but it's a pretty smooth pan. But it's all, you get what you pay for. I mean, at, at the end of the day, you get what you pay for. I highly recommend if you're an up and coming automotive photographer, definitely consider uh, looking for a decent tripod, 80 to $100 range. I think this was $79.99 when I purchased it. Wow, three years ago. And it still still works great. Still works like it's brand new. One complaint is like the Allen bolts on the side here. They've gotten loose a couple times, but tighten them down, you're good. And a lot of these tripods come with tools. So I hope this helps somebody else out. Hopefully helps somebody that's up and coming automotive photographer thinking about things that can help them improve and step up ever so slightly, but little things make a big difference usually. So if you like the video, like, comment, subscribe. If you haven't already, drop a comment. What do you wanna see next? I'll do anything within reason. Keep on learning and I will see you in the next video. I came all the way out here and I even cleaned up my truck and I don't even think I'm gonna take any pictures of it. Cause it's just a truck, it's just a truck. I need something else. Oh, and by the way, at the beginning of the video when I said, thanks Peter, he gave me the idea to do that windowsill thing. He also did something else. He showed me this car company that is producing these electric cars. Well, let's just say I put it in a reservation. It's a goal. They're gonna have these cars out just before 2024. And my goal is to have enough money saved up to where I can buy one completely by that time. These cars are amazing. I'm, I'm talking, they are, like he showed me one picture and I was like, that's awesome. That's so, that's awesome looking. I, I need one. Literally, it's a, it's a rear wheel drive electric car and it has like an, like an 80s vibe to it. Like, can you imagine? Like I will be, my Instagram is gonna be full of this car. So thanks Peter for that. Not that I need to spend money like that on a vehicle right now, but hey, gotta set goals, right? And it's, I got time. I got, I got three years-ish. Better get to work. <laughs> Oh,